Hello guys, my name is Rush Badger, and welcome to, I want to say it's Lumpini Market, but I know my brain like 30 minutes ago was like, Doc, Doc, it's Lumpini Market. No, it's like, no, it's like Lumpahini, and I, Ninja please, I don't speak Chinese, alright, I'm just gonna leave it at that. And Chow Boy's body's gonna somehow levitate and disappear, okay, there you go. For some reason, whenever you die in the skid loader on this map, it... Your body flails around like a marionette before you disappear into thin air. Now, I'm not going to say that the skid loader is not awesome, because it is awesome, right? And so awesome, it's awesome, right? I wouldn't say it's necessarily that extreme, but it is definitely very enjoyable to use. I can't say it's very effective, though. That's something that I can't say. I know a lot of you are going to say, You bite your tongue! I have like a 10kd, and I... I know a lot of you are much more MLG euphoric and enlightened than I am, so I, I really can't make a final call as to whether or not that vehicle is particularly useful, but on the map. So this garden place, this Lumpini Garden Market Garden, I, I'm always going to get that mixed up by the way. I'm always going to call Pearl, call it Pearl Garden and Lumpini Market instead of the correct sort of terms, which are obviously Lumpini Garden and Pearl Market, alright? Those are the correct ones. Now, I would say my tier list, and I know you guys hate tier lists, but I definitely say that my tier list, and I thought, oh, I thought y'all was going to get Daskro, I thought he was going to crush him, but it didn't really work out as I had planned. But I think for you guys, the Sunken Dragon, Sunken Dragon the map, is probably going to be the most fun. And after that is probably going to come Pearl Market, just for the pure close quarters action. I think this is going to be third, and Propaganda might be last. I just think just how rectangular and how sort of boring and sort of bland the map is, is going to draw away from Propaganda, and also to the fact that you can't take off Kim Jong-un's head is a, it's a little disappointing, all right? Levolution, where you can topple that statue, I think would be pretty awesome. Would not go over well with foreign governments, but who cares about foreign governments, all right? Hashtag Merka. And I do think that this map is also going to be enjoyable for a lot of you that... You want infantry, but you don't necessarily want a pro market. I know pro <laughs> Dice is really shoving that into your face, like, Oh, bro, you want infantry? I'll give you infantry. Pearl market. Can't walk 10 centimeters without getting shot in the face by Buckshot. Extreme. I, I know that's, that's sort of the infantry that a lot of you don't want, but I think this is a good mix, because there's no tanks in this level. It's purely just ATVs, skid loaders, and... I want to call them sea dews, but whatever, personal watercrafts, whatever you'd like to personally call them. But there's no real heavy armor, there's no, not a whole lot of machine gun emplacements and those sorts of things. So it's, it's a little bit more spread out, but it definitely is infantry oriented. So I think this, is be, this will be a map that a lot of you will enjoy, that a lot of you will not particularly like in terms of... Like, I, I think this is going to be a map that a lot of you guys will like, that many of you will not enjoy Pearl Market. So it's like, this is the alternative to Pearl Market if you really want infantry-based combat that isn't completely just shoving you into close quarters where you're probably going to get absolutely butt-graped by shotguns in, in general. So I think it's definitely very fun, but nothing really beats Sunken Dragon, in my opinion. I, I think I'm always going to be biased that Sunken Dragon is better. And in terms of capture the flag, it's very similar to Battlefield 3. I know, I know very, very few people that play capture the flag on Battlefield 4. I think there's usually only one open server, but you know the usual, and as you saw just a few minutes prior, I was pretty well just spawn raping them. I think that's going to be a definite definite downside to being the Chinese side. They might have tweaked that in the last day or two, but I didn't really understand what happened here. I was trying to ride on top of the mud or poop pile. I know a lot of you are probably... This is like the perfect time to use a line of, get shit on, nerd, but I, I, I didn't really use it at the particular point in time. It kind of just didn't that sort of catchphrase was not in the center of my brain at that point in time. It didn't really work out. Now, the, like I said, the Chinese are probably going to get spawn raped. And Kobe! Oh, let's see. Sniped with the double. The, I, I didn't really get a two... I didn't get a biscuit because nobody was hanging around. So just the two-piece. But like I was saying, I think the Chinese side is inherently going to get spawn raped by a lot of people that have frag rounds. Just because there's that little strip of land where you actually spawn. Then there's that little moat... I don't want to call it a canal, but that, that like 10 feet of water that you have to swim through. And then you can actually enter the map and start being effective. If I can stand on that rooftop with frag rounds, I can just hit you all day. Unless you have a squad mate to spawn on, I'm just going to sit there all day and just spawn wreck you. I know that kind of sounds awful, but it's going to happen, all right? It's going to happen. People do that all the time, and if you give the, the opposing team the ability to do that, especially on the Chinese side, that's not going to be a very good case for your team winning the game. And in typical CTF fashion, it's still a lot more oriented towards 
oh look, we have a lot of players in your spawn, you have a lot of players in our spawn, we're each trying to kind of run towards each other and make sure that we always have the flag at all points of time, but there is, a, a, at least from what we played here, it was like a 12v12, there was a lot of stalemate where I'm sitting in my, I'm spit like even right now, I'm sitting in my spawn with their flag, they're sitting in their spawn with our flag, and we're just waiting till somebody can return it, and of course Das Girl's gonna hit me out of nowhere with uh, a UCAF, that's just wonderful. I, I actually think that might be a very, very realistic thing to be using, is a UCAF. If you could somehow just constantly track down that flag carrier and hit him with a UCAF consistently, and that was, I believe, Stun Gravy and Pony Lion. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you guys saw that out of the corner of your screen, but that would be those two that launched the the CDU consistently over to the other team's spawn as a mode of transportation because those really tight, it's really tight quarters, and this bush monster was having a bit of trouble vaulting. I don't know if he's a highly trained super soldier or not. I think Dice may have lied to us as to the specific capacity of training that a lot of these guys have received, but I definitely think that Pony Line and Stun Gravy are on the right track in terms of transporting yourself from your spawn to their spawn to grab the flag. It's very, very difficult to weave throughout this little... Even the waterways in in a in a sea dew, it's too confined and it's way too narrow for you to maneuver without just getting shot in the face anytime that you come across an enemy. It's it's too predictable where you're gonna move in that specific vehicle, and same with the ATV. You have to go over all those bridges and you're kind of just a sitting duck because you're probably gonna run into infantry on the way there that are just gonna take your head off. And this is just more spawn wrecking, exactly what I'm talking about. I think that's gonna be a problem if they don't somehow patch I don't know exactly where you're exactly where the Chinese team spawns or where you have the ability to camp on a roof or that sort of thing. I think that's definitely going to be advantageous to be Americans the majority of the time, but yet again, I would like to say that this is not necessarily indicative of what your experience is going to be because this was usually like a 12v12. I know even some points in time somebody was eating, so it would be like a 10 or 11v12. So keep in mind, this is going to be very different from even a 32 player game or a 48 player game. I don't know if I want to do a, I, I would want to do a 64, and yeah, see, there, there's the, there they are launching, I don't know if you guys saw on the mini-map, there they are launching themselves back. Stun Gravy and Pony Line were very adamant and very effective with that specific technique, but hopefully you guys will be able to play this as soon as it comes out. I know right now, like right about now as I upload this video, there's going to be a showcase, or it might happen just previously to when I upload this, but there's going to be a showcase over on Twitch from the Battlefield stream if you uh, if you guys want to see more footage of the maps ahead of time, but I'm sure you're going to expand with that on YouTube anyways. But if you'd like to see the other three maps, I have videos of those as well. You can either click the annotations on your screen, or you. There's also link in the descriptions and links in the description. And if you'd like to see more, I will also be live streaming this as soon as it comes out tomorrow morning. But I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und Seder.